Welcome to another edition of From the Press Box. I'm your host, Fred Lang, and on vacation and out of town today is John Walnick, but running the ship, flying the plane, none other than our own Dylan Lang. Good morning, Dill. Morning, Fred. And we have some special guests. It's a very special day here today. It's Sunday, and uh, this weekend we had the Friday night was a celebration for Coach Schaefer, Hall of Fame great coach, celebrating his career. And we had the movie that we've been talking about for a long time, Mustang Magic. And in the house, in the house, we have Mark Benke, Darren Price, Bill Corbel, Doug Schaefer, and Jason Heckethorn. Welcome, guys. Good to have you here, man. A little, much, little man. crowded in here, and, you know, it, it was, it's really a special show for us because it was such a great weekend and to have you guys who i know you you you've been busy all weekend and to to all you all you guys to show up it's really nice and uh but i'm not surprised i'm not surprised so uh great having you here and uh before we go on from the press box is underwritten by mary kate and billy two great young people who loved harbor country and we appreciate them underwriting us and also the views and opinions expressed on from the press box are not necessarily the views of WRHC, but rather our own. And uh, with all of us here today, I'm sure we all have some different stories and different opinions. So uh, anyway, good to have you guys here. Good to have you here. And grab a mic and speak up anytime you want. Uh, let's start out with uh, Friday night, the celebration of uh, Coach Schaefer. Uh, MC'd by? MC by... Fred Lang right here, which I, I really had a good time uh, and, and enjoyed the heck out of it. And we saw a bunch of people there who we haven't seen in a while. Really good turnout. Uh, the food was provided by Greenbush Brewery. Greenbush Brewery and, and delicious food. And uh, Coach Schaefer and Peggy Schaefer were there. And it was honoring Coach. And a lot of players showed up. A lot of ex-coaches, fans, and it was a great turnout and, and a wonderful time. Uh, Darren, Darren Price is here. Darren, where are you living now? And, and uh, tell us what you're doing these days. Uh, I live up uh, just north of Kalamazoo, uh, Otsego. I teach uh, at the middle school there at Otsego. Uh, I've coached uh, some middle school basketball for many, many years uh, and have coached uh, baseball up there as well. So it was uh, Always awesome to get back here, down here to see family, but uh, this weekend was uh, about a lot of people and uh, just nice to see uh, a lot of uh, people that are very close and special to me. So it was a great weekend. And uh, you, you look good on film, too. You look good. <laughs> Darren was a point guard, of course, for that uh, great great team uh, back in, well, what the, the movie was all about, Mustang Magic, and uh, sitting next to Darren's Billy Corbel and Billy. I see you all the time, but why don't you tell everybody what, what you do these days? Sure. But, uh, first, let me say, you know, the expression, uh, don't quit your day job. Uh, I actually think Fred might consider quitting his day job because I tell you, he did a great job uh, emceeing that event on Friday uh, and might have a future as a, as a uh, uh, host of, well, you know, besides just the Radio Harbor Country here. Uh, look out. He, he might be snatched up with some talent there. Uh, anyways, I live in the area still, uh, work at Lost Dunes Golf Club and uh, have uh, two children, Hannah and Will, who are going to River Valley High School. And uh, while I still see some familiar faces uh, around the area, this weekend was especially uh, nice because you saw a lot of people uh, and spent a lot of time with, with some folks who uh, you either do or don't get to see a lot of. And uh, it was very, very enjoyable. Great, great weekend. Thank you, Bill. And Doug? Dougie? Yeah, thanks for Doug inviting Schaefer. me. Doug Schaefer. All right. Good having you here, man. And this weekend's been a blur, but just a special weekend for the entire Schaefer family. So I know I'm speaking for my dad when I say and my mom that this is a great capstone to his career at River Valley. And Mark forever will be in your gratitude for putting this movie together. And, um, um, and then to all my great teammates and friends, this is a piece of history that, that we'll be able to share with, with generations that very few people have an opportunity to have. So again, Mark, we thank you for that. And uh, um, I just can't tell uh, and thank so many people from this community who came out on Friday night and then came out 700 plus people on, 
on Saturday night to watch the movie uh, meant a lot to my dad, and, and we're just very humbled by the whole weekend experience as a family. Uh, but uh, I'm still here in the area, and I work out at Lake Michigan College, and I, I coach the men's basketball team there, so I'm, I'm staying within the family business. All right. Good having you here. Jason Heckethorn, the sure shot lefty. <laughs> I, I, I'm still in the area as well. Um, I, I work up in Three Oaks Harbor Country Insurance. I've got two children that are in the uh, River Valley School District, a fifth grader and a first grader. And uh, much like these fellas, I, I, you know, this this weekend was really special, cool. It was neat to see a lot of familiar faces, relive a lot of good times. And uh, I, I'm just tickled to be a part of it. Well. Good to have you here, man. And Mark Benke, the man who put it all together with his crew, Mustang Magic, which was premiered last night at the Mendel Center in Benton Harbor. Great turnout, Mark. You had to have been very pleased with the turnout. Yep, thanks, Freddie. It was a uh, it was a special weekend. I think these guys all hit on it. A lot of people back. The Friday night reunion, the Saturday night premiere, um, the feedback. The, the feedback that I appreciated the most was the look on people's faces when they walked out. Because it was then that we knew we did exactly what we set out to do, and we did it the right way. So uh, just a great weekend. I'm so appreciative for these guys. And uh, and now it's sort of on to what's next. So, uh, you know, and this film is not done. I mean, we're going to go to festival with it, and we're going to send it across the country. And I hope my wife, Ingrid, knows that if it gets shown, I've got to go. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, and then we'll move on. But, um you know this story will be one that will be kept forever and um and now we have a historical artifact that people can say okay that's what it was well it, w it was a fantastic show and and i had seven phone calls last night and and all seven of them were thumbs up everybody who had seen it and i had several people and guys chime in on this too had several people who said wow i didn't know that you guys had open gyms that were that competitive against each other and I said, oh, man, that, that went on all the time. And, you know, back back before, you know, I would play against Briggs and Nash and, and, and Gary Schaefer, and they were kind of fading out when you guys were coming up, but you were playing with, with – you still played with Gary and, and, and Greg, and but we had some real battles. And, and I had people say, wow, did that really go on? I said, oh, heck, yeah, that went on. It was crazy. And uh, – and it, it was, I think that really surprised a lot of people, but that was, that was part of our life back then. And, uh, and it was funny because we talked about how we would, at first we dominated you guys, and then all of a sudden you guys got better and better. And, and then those games were like two-point games, you know, throughout the rest of the, the year when you guys were juniors and seniors. And uh, what, what do you remember most about, those open gyms jason go ahead what uh well they, it was it was a lot of fun uh learned learned a lot um i guess on a, on a comical aspect I, I do remember bob lewis's phantom foul uh <laughs> that after i'm pretty sure darren stole the ball clean and uh or maybe it was bill and i don't think bob called the foul until after we scored the winning layup and it caused uh chaos i'm sure the ball got kicked around and i do remember bill complaining saying you know something to the effect that heaven forbid someone could steal the ball from the great bobby lewis <laughs> but he was pretty great to us those days and and it, it was hard to steal the ball from him so um it was it was kind of you know uh, i'm sure that those games over the hot gym in the summer you know those were probably some of the toughest games that we would ever play and I do remember it wasn't at an open gym, but it was at a, uh, a practice where Coach had brought in an alumni uh, team. I'm sure you were on it, Fred. And uh, it, was, it was a competitive game uh, or controlled scrimmage. I don't ever recall Coach keeping score, um, but, but you kind of knew from the ebb and flow of it if, if we were competitive or if, if you guys were taking it to us. But uh, I, I do recall one time as, as the alumni guys were unlacing their shoes, coach pointing out to us that we weren't going to play against a better team than what we just played against. And, uh, you know, that's, that was uh, pretty impressionable and I'm sure helped, helped give us some confidence 
though I don't think a few of us lacked any. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I think when Bobby got that ball stolen, too, he, he, he slapped his own hand to try and make a sound that uh, I, I remember that very well. And when, when he said, oh, I got fouled, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I was turning my head like, oh, no, you can't. You can't. Oh, but, uh, Doug, you, you were, you're the, the youngest out of the crew. You were a year younger than uh, uh, Jason and uh, Darren and Billy, and but you were right in the thick of those games too. Uh, what are your best memories or what what stands out to you on, on those things? What stands out to me is is that all the generations of alumni – definitely made us better we wouldn't have near been as good of basketball players without having the opportunity to compete and battle against all you guys and then speaking with you guys you know my teammates who are a year older you guys made me uh um much better than i would have ever been if there wasn't a class ahead of me like you guys because i uh was against it every day um playing against more athletic and more talented people and and you guys uh took it to me every chance you got and and in the end i think by the time the end of my junior year happened i was just starting to to uh grow a little bit where physically i could compete at that level and and then that i think uh then i could contribute a little bit more but the open gyms are something that you don't realize what a what a blessing that was for a program development piece until you go off to college and play and start talking about your high school days and you can't find a teammate on your college basketball team that can relate to those stories of alumni open gyms and and so uh you know when you think of trailblazing i, I think of my brother gary who uh, was the first guy that had to play for his dad that couldn't have been easy even though we were successful and uh, uh jojo white and brother gary and because of mr white being the athletic director and my dad being the coach there was a generation of about 30 years that some coach's kid or athletic director's kid had a key to the gym and we were always in there and we were always grabbing our buddies and and uh you know that had a lot to do with the success of the program you know real good and you know what i remember too is that when when that gym would open if we were going to play at noon people would get there at quarter till 12. Now we've, we've tried open gyms recently and, and now they get there at quarter after 12. And you knew if you got there early, you were gonna get in on the first game. And, and sometimes people were standing outside the gym, you know, with the door locked waiting for, you know, somebody to show up with a key. And uh, I'm not gonna say we had extra keys made because that wouldn't go over well with the school board, but uh, we seemed to get in there Quite often, quite often. And part of the last night that was fun for us as we made it was the stories of the alumni gyms in the film and, you know, Coach Jerry Hinman calling them the five wonder boys and talking about not hurting for a lack of confidence. And, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And, and I think that, uh, in, at least in the section I was seated in, it got a lot of laughs. Oh, when, when Greg, Greg said, well, maybe we should split these guys up because we don't want to, what do he say, we don't want to... Hurt their confidence. Hurt their confidence. And Hinman says... Hurt their confidence, you know. He, he knew. He knew. He said, "Man, no way," you know. And that 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 was true. And it, it, yeah, it was great. It really was great. Billy, you know, you you played in the open gyms. Uh, what's your? Well, I, I think uh, if, if there was, thank goodness, there's not footage because uh, it'd have to be an R-rated movie. You could make another movie about the open gyms uh, <laughs> if, if, if the some of those games and stories are are uh, probably almost as amazing as as. The actual uh, games we played, uh, it just there wasn't a there was no crowd to watch it. I think that's maybe, you know, building on everything everybody else said is absolutely true. But yeah, those games were as intense and and as difficult as uh, any game just about that we probably played, except for there was nobody in there watching us, which even makes it more interesting. Is that the intensity level and and the uh, competitiveness and and how hard everybody played for no other reason than to get better and to try to win there you were there wasn't anybody there to impress there wasn't anybody who was going to know what ball you dove after or uh, how you got those scars on your elbows it was purely out of uh determination and and uh a, a will to win and i you know it's ex absolutely true that that was a a huge advantage to our program during those years and you know I, I i was just thinking about this but when we would open that gym we would just bring one ball out i mean we didn't have six balls where we're shooting around it we just got one ball out, and we were ready to play. There wasn't any shooting around at the side baskets or anything, which is, which is kind, of, yeah. kind of a strange thing, really. Yeah, but, I remember the other thing I think I remember is it seemed like the rules were always uh, 
you play, you win. If you win, you got to play another one. Play but then you, you say, to, you know, you didn't just get to get, if your team kept winning, you didn't get to keep playing. And quite honestly, if you won two, you didn't have a third one in you. Because That's right. You, you were you were spent uh, to ideally, try to win those two games. Ideally, yeah. you know. Ideally, uh, having 15 guys there, which we did a lot, yeah. there was always one team sitting. You'd play two and rest one and, and usually play up to 25. Now, let me ask you this. When did the three-point line come in? Uh because during the movie, we saw no three-point line, and then we saw it. It was 1988, actually, is when it came in. So the 87 part of that story, it, you're playing by twos. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, because you guys could all shoot the three really well, too. And, and it, it, it did benefit you uh, in, in your last year, right? Yeah, I think, I think it was so new that we didn't actually understand, like in today's uh, game, yeah. we didn't understand how to use it. It, it certainly could have been a, probably a bigger advantage for us than, than it was, but it was such a... A, a new well, I remember you, uh, Darren and, and Doug, in the in the film hitting some a couple threes. Uh, but yeah, I guess you didn't use it. But boy, that would have been a uh, probably a, a real vital part of your game if if you if we knew then what we know now. Sure. Yeah, I appreciate Mark putting probably the only two three pointers I made. <laughs> <Is> that right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good editing, I guess. Yeah, right. right? Darren, in, in the open gyms for you, what do you, what do you recall? Um, to be honest with you, probably the open gyms, I probably remember more of them than I do some of the games that I actually played, just because of, like everybody said, the, you know, the intensity. Uh, but looking back on it, you know, as I got done, uh, I appreciate it even more because uh, you guys made us better. I mean, I, look for, I, mean I, I couldn't wait to get out there. I mean... Didn't I, I hated losing, you know? Uh, but I, I knew as we got closer and closer, how much better we were getting, and you know, I appreciate that more than you know, you guys will ever know. And, and like I said, I, I just think uh, the opportunity to get out there, like Doug was saying, you know, we knew we can get into the gym, and we love playing basketball. You know, we we love the opportunity to see where we were at, and uh, I think that made a, a huge impact and a difference. Uh, on not only us as a team, but just individually and things like that. Oh, great. Well, Coach Schaefer at the front. Oh, go ahead, Doug. Yeah, I just thought of a, a story, an open gym story that sums up the culture of that generation. And uh, it was a hot summer August day, and it was right around the time that they reseal the gym every year. So they say the gym's got to be closed for X number of days to let the clear coat sealant dry. And I think that was one of the days where I was responsible for opening up the gym because I don't think uh, Greg would have ever let that happen. But we uh, saw the doors were taped shut. You know, they, they put the, the tape around the doors to show that we couldn't get in there. So we all go up on the balcony and we're looking down and we're seeing the glare of the lights coming through the windows. And we're all thinking to ourselves, it looks dry, you know. And, and I remember Bobby Lewis scaling down the bleachers over the, the top of the balcony and just, you know, tiptoeing around to test the waters. And he's like, yep. Boys, it's dry. We can go. So for the next two hours, we have another classic open, open gym through the fumes of the recently dried, you know, clear coat seal. And even though there's signs everywhere saying stay off the gym probably for another three days, but we squeezed in an open gym and and uh, they never knew it. They never knew it. They never knew it. Hey, we needed to play. That's right. We needed to play. Oh, that's cool. You know, you guys on the floor. I mean, you guys got along really well. I mean, and and. You know, you were a team on the floor, but but off off the court uh, during the season, even not during the season when season when, when basketball season was going on, did you guys hang together? Did you know, I mean, what kind of relationship? Sometimes you can play with a guy, and and during basketball season, you know, you guys are seeing eye to eye and you're best friends and everything's good. But you know, did was there were you guys always friends even off the court or just on the court or? or little both who wants to answer that Darren yeah, I guess I'll start it I mean I even to this day I mean I, I'm, I know as we went through we probably had our spats about certain things uh, you know through personal stuff but uh, I can remember going to every one of these guys' house at some point in time during my childhood uh, they're some of my greatest friends uh, and, and even to this day I mean l like this weekend when we get back together and it's it's like it happened yesterday I mean there are some guys that I will cherish forever uh they mean the world to me i love them to death uh and you know you hear i mean you just got done with the the nca tournament and you hear a lot of the you know we're family and things like that uh because of the the, the community and how close our families were and stuff like that i mean i 
and we've heard a lot, you know, I couldn't have asked for a, a better group of guys to not only play with, but to have as best friends and close friends and, and be able to come back and, you know, have my little girl uh, be a part of, you know, their lives uh, as well as my life. So yeah, that, that's kind of how I feel. Okay. Anybody else on that? Uh, I'll agree with Darren. I, I think we were uh, uh, pretty pretty close friends all throughout our childhood, and uh, and it translated over onto the basketball court or baseball diamond or whatever the season happened to be. But uh, I you know I, I don't remember any of us having huge differences. I mean there there was. Uh, skirmishes here and there and it probably had to do with a competitiveness of sorts um you know if if there was a score involved uh we could not be so so good of friends until the game was over <laughs> right but but uh, I, I i agree with darren i i think i you know was really fortunate that uh and, and i think it speaks a lot about the the nature of our community particularly in in those times it, it was a really uh close-knit community everybody knew everybody um you, you knew your friends parents you knew their siblings um and uh and certainly that that helped uh create the type of friendships that that i think we all have but okay and mark you 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 know you knew these guys uh for a long time but i'm sure when when making the film did you feel that that closeness and and yeah i mean really we I, I knew it ahead of time, but we as a creative team knew it almost from the time that we had two interviews in, and they were so congruent and so similar. And you could just, we could sense the camaraderie between these guys when they're not in the same room, but just as they, the way that they would speak. So it was very easy to, to paint that. Um, you know, I know as we're sitting here, even before we went on air, they're, they're very charismatic. And, uh, yeah, we had we and, had some and good we talks. had a good time, and it was it was a lot of fun to tell their story. And um, and last night there was a VIP reception before, and, and I I basically got up and talked, and and I think these guys and, and Steve and Dave who aren't with us today they they know how I feel about them, and whether I was going to make a film about their story or River Valley basketball or not, that's how I always feel. So. Uh, you know, in a way, I'm a 37 year old kid and still looking up to these guys. Yeah, that's so. great. Well, well, Steve was going to be with us, but he had to get back. He had to get up at five this morning uh, because of some recruiting issues where he coaches up at Lake Superior State, so he couldn't be with us. But it would have been nice to have him here. But he wishes he could have been here. And Dave, I couldn't get hold of Dave, so I'm not sure where he's at. Uh, <laughs> Dave Dave Han uh, was um, the the talk of the lobby after the film last night, and uh, and. Because he's Dave Hahn, and uh, I guess you know, for you know, you can see the the movie and judge for yourself. But a friend of mine from Hamilton who knows nothing about River Valley says, "I really love that guy with the hat on." <laughs> well, it was it was a great film. It was really great. And uh, Doug, I'm sure you've you've talked to your dad and your brothers, of course, and and the whole family was at at both events. And and I guess uh, they're naming. Friday night after the after the show, the uh, the ceremony honoring Coach Schaefer, J.C. German came up from the school board and announced that the gymnasium is going to be called Jerry Schaefer Gymnasium. Now, Mark had told me that, and I had to keep my mouth closed for a few days, and there wasn't many people who knew it. And and when he told me, he was he was visiting my house. We we're just going over some things, and you know, it really it really hit me. I mean, I, uh, I, I, my eyes watered up because I, I was just so happy about it, and I had to keep my mouth shut. I didn't even tell Brother Gary, and and you know that that was hard to do. But anyway, did you sense this coming? Did did anybody, uh, you know? I mean, it it had to have been. What was the reaction from your mom and dad, and and I guess your brothers? Yeah, you know, th from what I can tell. I was completely surprised. I had no clue that that was coming or wasn't even thinking along those lines when, when you know, the folks uh, or the, the gentleman from the school board stood up. But uh, my dad, you know, in typical Pashaf's way, is just very humbled by it and in some ways, you know, more embarrassed than anything. But I think deep down, if, if he were truly honest, he would would reflect very positively on on that decision and feel very proud of of having his name up there. It was it was a great moment. It was a great way to to top the night off. And and Mark, you 
Go ahead. And, uh, you know, this December when the basketball season gets started, there's going to be a dedication game. And this summer I'm going to um, sit on a, a committee to – to plan that that event and some other things that are going to happen. So um, I'm sure that we'll get that in the papers as soon as we get a date and uh, hopefully everybody can make it. And it's just a, it's a very fitting honor. You know, it, it's not a, it's not a reward. It's an honor, you know, and, and underneath where it says Jerry Schaefer gymnasium, it'll say for past, present and future Mustangs. And I think maybe coach Schaefer, that's the part of it that he'll like the most. Mm, great. Great. And you know, Al Schaefer was there, uncle Al, and, and of course, uh, Uncle Ron didn't get much press, but he he played a huge role in in the the River Valley uh, basketball program, and and he was always keeping the stats, and and, uh, and it was great seeing both of them at uh, at the Friday night uh, thing and, and the Saturday at the movie. Yeah, Uncle Ron um, was as much a part of the program as as anyone. And when I talked about my brother Gary being a trailblazer for all of us and, and kind of uh, really setting the tone of what a coach's kid uh, is has in terms of responsibilities and then handling that pressure with class and, and, and in a way that all of us could look up to, Uncle Ron was the trailblazer for my dad and Uncle Al, who are Hall of Fame coaches. But he was a, a very successful head coach here in this area, took a, a team to the Final Four himself. And... Uh, just was the big brother, the oldest brother of that clan. And I think Uncle Al and my dad would would both agree that if it weren't for Uncle Ron, Uncle Ron paving the way for them, you know, they wouldn't have had the careers and the, and the, the opportunity for success that they had. Uh, right before the, the show started on Saturday, I walked over because they were sitting an aisle over from me. And I said, they weren't looking at me. And I said, hey, you guys got to keep it down. And they looked up and then they just started laughing, you know. But yeah, Al had a great time too. It was nice seeing Nice seeing Al. So the movie, the movie, I mean, I, I think there was probably 900 people there, I, at least, at least. And and Lakeshore's coach was there, Coach Sanford. Uh, Brandywine's coach was there, uh, Al uh, Westendorf. Uh, and, and there were people there who you didn't even see that were there because there were so many people. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was crazy. So, I mean, what... How do you guys feel? I mean, you, you got to feel just, just, you know, people coming up to you, just telling you that they remembered this, and it, it had to be a big rush for you the whole weekend. It had to be crazy. Lots of great memories. Yeah. I mean, lots of things that perhaps uh, had been forgotten uh, came back to the surface. I, I, for one, I'm excited to flip in my, my disc and watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, I think something really special about it is the people who, the kids or young adults who, who'd never witnessed this type of thing when it was going on, such as Dylan here, who's running our board. I was actually pleasantly surprised to see kids from my school that were there, and there were a lot of them there as well. So it was it was a pretty mixed turnout of old and new. And, and Dylan, I thought maybe last minute he was going to say, you know, I got this going on, or but but he knew I wanted him to see it, and he didn't. He he went into it with a open uh, an open mind, and you said you were really pleasantly surprised. Yeah, it blew up my expectations. I mean, I was actually expecting to go see the movie and then drive home with you and have you going, oh, see how great I was, see how great I was in that movie. <laughs> But uh, thankfully, you didn't go that much o that overboard, and uh, yeah, it really blew my expectations. I thought it was just going to be another uh, local movie with some my you know, just ram rambling, and it was pretty funny. It was pretty good. It was pretty entertaining, just overall. And I, and I think back then, twenty five years ago, I mean, how the community made us feel. You know, we talked about going into games and lines and everything else kind of brought that all back again you know now it's 25 years later and we got a movie a documentary that mark and his team did a phenomenal job and told it uh you know extremely well uh and to have that feeling again i mean i've got a three three-year-old girl who was you know trying to you know it was hard to keep her in one spot but every time she looked up and saw daddy uh, she'd look over me and say daddy you up? And I, you know, I kind of like yeah that's you know so it was it was awesome and i you know i can't thank mark and his team enough and, and appreciate all the dedication and hard work uh uh, that he's done over the last two years to to make this even possible and to make us feel special in the way that we you know that we did. And Mark, now now the next step here too, and I'm I'm just guessing, but there's film 
festivals or film events that you can enter this movie in and and what people view it and then they respond if, if there's a buzz then then things get better and what what exactly what's the worst case scenario worst case scenario would be nobody ever sees it again of course right but but what is the next step and what is the best case scenario well this week we will um we will target all of the film festivals nationally that have a documentary category we'll submit it to all of them um, how many is that roughly oh, it's gonna 20 30 40 okay. i mean it'll be a lot traverse city have one yep yep i thought so, so the michigan yeah. ones especially the the especially the coastal michigan festivals it's a little difficult um, because they're pretty restrictive in terms of the guidelines, but when you get to the national stage, Los Angeles, or Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Philadelphia, uh, Detroit, Chicago, Chicago, okay. um, you have a chance there, and I think it'll play really well in the Midwest. Um, but for us, we, we we think it'll it'll after last night's feedback, we think it'll it'll show well there. Also, iTunes, Netflix, you know, we're looking at, at that, and we want that to happen, um, but. You know, just making a film like that, I mean, it, it it will live on with everybody that sees it. And whether they know River Valley or Bill Corbel or Jason Heckethorn or anybody, I had people come up to me from South Bend that said, I don't even know River Valley. And I had goosebumps. And I'm like, okay, we, we, we win. That's what we wanted to do. Because we knew the RV crowd was going to like it, um, or most of them were going to like it. And uh, and and we, we would be okay. So we would try to gear it towards the broader population now last night after the after the movie you i, I think everybody gathered at the five o'clock in in stevensville and, and did you run into a lot of people there who you didn't know who saw the film or did you talk to people oh. after the show who you didn't know who saw the film probably a mixture of both i tried to park myself out in the lobby so when people left i, I saw a lot of them and it they didn't have to say anything to me. i could tell on their faces that they were entertained that they enjoyed it some people couldn't help but come up and shake my hand or give me a hug or you know, I mean, all of those things. And then the 5 o'clock post-party, it was uh, it was basically Mustang Magic 2 when every, you know, post-party mattered because uh, cause it got a lot of, it was a lot of stories there. Um, the Bobby Lewis story from earlier was one that comes to mind early on a Sunday. But it was, it was just a lot of fun. And when you invest that much, just as when you're playing as an athlete, when it's all said and done and you can see the, I guess, the, the rewards for your labor, it, it's, it's really fun. And I just... I just want to, you know, hang around and shoot stories and, you know, give my shapes a hug and, and all that stuff. And it, it was fun. So no, no way that, I mean, it'll be a, it'll be a weekend that not only myself, but the guys that worked on it and my wife and my kids will remember forever. Well, you know, we were sitting in the second row. So after, well, during the show, you could hear people laughing. And, and, and so you knew people were really into it and, and people were laughing at the right times and things were funny. And, and there was some, it was a great, great story. And uh, but after the after the show, you know, I turned around and just looked at the crowd, and you could just see, you know, no nobody was sleeping. I'll tell you that people enjoyed the heck out of it. Well, and one of the highlights for me too was I actually by the time they got to we got to the last blooper um, quote in the credits, I went out into the lobby and I hear Ron Walnick, Ronnie Walnick, yell, "Go Mustangs!" And it was just, I wasn't even there. I said, that's Ronnie, and that's awesome. And uh, and it, it, was, it was fun. And, and it, it, there were some people last night that were really emotionally touched by that. And um, and I guess that's the power of the documentary genre is that you can do that. We can take a basketball story that happened in Three Oaks, Michigan, and make it emotional for people. And, and we and it was good. And the, the last picture of Coach Schaefer with Zach Robertson, I mean, I don't know how – you know, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I watched that, and I don't think I ever had a dry eye. My my wife Ingrid saw that; that was the only part she saw before, and she walked out of the room. And I thought, oh my gosh, we missed it. She hates it, and she's in the, in the kitchen crying because it just very emotional. Zach looks like a boxer that just went fifteen rounds with another boxer named Redford Bishop Borges. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it, it was great. It was great. Uh, you see. What's next? What's next for and and why don't you tell me uh, the people who helped with the yep. film and the, the guys that were on our team? Kevin Weed, who I think all of you in here uh, met, he came down for the weekend, came down for the reunion. Never played at River Valley and just wanted to help. Brian Grabinski, who did a lot of our graphics work, and then Cody Aiding, who's actually a former student of mine, 
he works in uh, the state of Wyoming for their newspaper doing IT. He's an IT director. Um, they also had that prideful look in their face last night. But what's next? Kevin and I uh, have a short list of things we'd like to do, but I think we would like to do something on the 1986 Class B state final with Flint Beecher and Saginaw Buena Vista where Chris Coles hit a three-quarter court shot and um, the – the opposing coach dropped the trophy afterwards, and I know some of these guys in here were there that day, and um, and we'll see how that goes. I mean, unfortunately, I think we're just a basketball video production company right now, and, and Kevin Weed just grew up in Detroit and, and, and gets it, and, and it's fun to work with him. And, and, you know, I got a little emotional last night talking about him because he, he's been awesome. Okay. Who, who, was, uh, who was the voice of the... Uh... The voice was Andy Benjamin, who was a class of 95 River Valley graduate. Never right? played, but a big, booming voice. And I didn't realize how good he was until I heard it last night at the Mendel Center. And, and three sentences in, I thought, oh, that's awesome. Oh, the, he, the, he has the bald yep, head, right? shaved head. I, you know, I wondered who that was. Yep. And that's Mike's brother. Yeah, it's Mike's brother. He grew up in the neighborhood with us, and we used to, you know, ride our bikes with little spazzes and all those things around. And he was one of them. And what he a great actually voice. studied film at Notre Dame. And and I thought we tried to keep it as RV central as we could with everything. And between Kevin Harrington, Andy Benjamin, Jason Honeycutt, Brett Williams, my brother. I mean, it was really fun. Wow, what a great voice. I I, I wondered who that was. I said, man, who was that? It reminded me of that guy who does those insurance commercials. You know, <laughs> Allstate. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we we are on the cutting edge here because we got Facebook questions. We uh, yes, we actually have social media here. We have some questions about uh, for all of you, for Banky, and then the rest of you as well. First question comes from Joe from Harbert to uh, you four. <clears throat> what was your reaction to being asked to be interviewed? Like, how did you feel being asked to be a part of this? Um, Billy Corbel. At, at first, it's uh, I guess it's it's. It's surprising when someone says they want to make a film, I guess, about something that was uh, just a part of your life, and, and you're thinking, really? You know, it, are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> and then, but uh, once once it gets rolling, and uh, it just is a, it's an honor, and, and I think it's already been said, it's it's just great to have this piece of film as a uh, as history that we can look back on and remember, and and and. I, I, it was awesome, I guess, is the did, best way to describe did it. Did any of you guys, when you first heard this, did you, did you say, well, I don't, I don't know if he's really serious about this or, or man, is he really going to do this? I mean, were you, you had to, I mean, that's a big, that's a big, it's one thing writing a book about it or having a, a article in a magazine, but, but making a film on, on, you know, two years of, of you guys' life, uh, it, it, you know, I, I guess you could, think about how that could happen because it was such a great time but i mean that's amazing somebody took it all the way to the bank and no pun intended bank e you know but uh, <laughs> but it, you, you had to have been did you believe him at first well i've i've talked to mark a few times before he even and he always would mention you know that, that's something that he's always wanted to do and you know in the back of my mind i think yeah that'd be that'd be cool but never really uh but then when he had the call and said, I'm coming down to, to Otsego to, to interview. And it was, I think, the last day of our uh, school year. I'm thinking, oh, okay, you must be real serious about it if he's coming down on his last day of the school year too. So, uh, And when you asked the question, you know, how do we – it was it was nervous doing the interview. And I think going into the movie last night, you know, having your interview and not really knowing what's, what's going to come up and how it's going to be perceived or how it's going to look and things like that. I think that's what I was most nervous about, but where they uh, sliced it and where they diced yeah, it. Yeah. And you just, I mean, all you know is that, you know, you had this great time talking with Mark, but you know, you know that the movie can only be so long and how much of uh, your footage is going to be in there was, you know, kind of the question mark, but. And you put your faith and trust in him and like, doing yeah, it right. Yeah, exactly. And he, he, he did it. I mean, he asked yesterday, he asked, I'm sure he asked all of us, you know, how it went and what we thought, because I know that was important to him. And, you know, it, it far exceeded my expectations. And uh, like I said before, I mean, I, I couldn't appreciate it anymore. Mark, did you, who was the first person when you decided that you're going with us other than your wife? I'm sure, I'm sure, she, you know, you told her, hang on, honey, we're doing this. Uh, right. Uh, and, and she played a, a big part and very supportive. And uh, who was the, did you go to coach first? Did you? Um, 
yeah, I think I went to Coach Schaefer first. Probably my brother Matt is somewhere in there, although, you know, that was two years ago, so it's a vague recollection. But um, I would say the most interesting part of it, of the, the group of guys that were sort of in the body of the film, Dave Hahn was the last that I talked to. Um, and that is my memory. But, uh, you know, and Steve Hedinga had to talk to Steve, and, you know, Steve was classic Steve. And he said, uh, you know, only the good stuff, right? And I thought, okay, yeah, only the good stuff. And um, But it, no, it, it probably coach first. If coach would have said, no, don't do it, I, I would have just shelved it and said, no, we're all right. Let's move on. And um, he doesn't want it. But he was great. And, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I've talked to most of these guys periodically before I started this. So it's, it's been fun. Now, where did, where, did the, where did you compile all the – the film and the tape and I don't think it what is it tape these days I no, mean no no it's uh... it's uh well we had a sort of a home base of three three drives I mean the, all the footage we have is 1.84 terabytes which is a ton and so it was really really challenging to pare it down but there were so many good things that the disc two features were fun for us to put together as well so I you know and, and we didn't see the uh what do you call it the the extra footage yep uh we haven't seen that yet and i'm sure those are going to be we yeah, saw a little bloopers yeah yeah we saw a little at the just a little taste to want you to yep. purchase that disc you know and uh, i think a lot of people it appeared that a lot of people were yeah, i was laughing at it and i didn't understand half yeah, of it yeah and, and people were buying those things up which 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 was great yeah i mean when when dave Hahn says you know uh coach was pissed he had steam coming out of his ears and steve i mean that story at the end i i, I did ask steve's permission for that i said hey i really want to use this in the credits and he said begrudgingly of course okay just go ahead and use it and uh yeah, it, it was fun. There were a lot of stories that were really interesting. You know, I, I can honestly say he never said, Fred! Never, I can say that. So I, I, I can honestly say that. But uh, I'll admit, if Hans has anything on the uh, outtake D, uh, DVD, I'd buy it just for that. Just because of how funny he was during the movie. I had more <laughs> requests for the Dave Hunt uncut interview after last night's <laughs> film. So may, maybe that's a, you know, a bonus uh, income option there. You know, funny thing too, and and it, I remember being in the huddle when playing with Greg Schaefer and Brad Pongelic, and and Coach would it doesn't have anything to do with anything, but when it was so loud, Coach would say, "Okay, Brad, you gotta get the get the ball." Greg, Fred, Brad, I I couldn't understand, but but if it was shooting a jump shot, I, I knew he wasn't talking to me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I was always inbounding the ball. But, me neither, uh, Fred. So don't feel bad. Okay. <laughs> Hey, it was nice seeing Tom Briggs at the at the at the place too. Tom Tom was a is a good friend and and uh, he 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 was a big part of uh, the whole program too. Dylan, give us another question. All right, next question from uh, Pearl Streeter, RV uh, student, uh, sophomore. Um, the lighting, Mark, uh, was the uh, all the lighting supplied by you, or was the interviewees uh, in charge of their own lighting? No, we, we took care of the lighting. Um, what? You have a couple different options to, to, to do to use when you're doing that. You can bring them all in into a controlled environment. I know ESPN yeah. 30 for 30 did that with the little big men, the Little League Baseball story. Um, we chose not to go that route, and so we used some of the natural lighting, um, but we also lit people differently based on what we thought <laughs> yeah, they because, were going to uh, do. So because yeah. uh, my friend was like, "Oh wait, the, this lighting is not matching this." Yeah, we, we yeah. didn't we didn't want it all to be the same. I mean, um, if you look at Coach Jim White, uh, you know, the longtime RV athletic director, we lit him differently than we did Fred or Jason, and uh, and it was it was sort of by design. Um, but when you're working in an uncontrolled environment, you have to sort of use what you have and then adjust it. I'd just like to add to that real quick that. And it maybe goes back to the first question um, on what's it like to be interviewed in a documentary is, and if you knew Mark was serious, is I, I think when Mark emailed me or called me and said, I'm doing this film and I want to interview you, I thought, okay. And I just kind of envisioned him showing up, you know, with a tape recorder and, a, and, a, and we're going to yeah. talk like, you know. Okay, guys, home video. Yeah. yeah. And, and when he comes out and pulls out all the lighting and the it's equipment, and like, you're oh. kind of like, wow, he's serious. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, are you serious? Yes, yeah, I am. Yeah, exactly. All right. And then uh, one last question that we have here, since uh, my dad kind of asked some of the other questions earlier. Uh, thanks a lot for that. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Sydney from Three Oaks, and uh, I'm phrasing it just how it was messaged on Facebook. <clears throat> how cool is it to be in a documentary? Kind of too early to tell, really, <laughs> yeah. I think. But 
I, I think. How cool is it? But I guess first of all is I mean how many people can say <laughs> that they are in one to number one and then being from a, such a small community you would never envision that really even happening to you so I mean it it's cool not even a, a great word for that I mean it's beyond that it's uh, it's unbelievable. I would just say I'm about as uncool as you can get <laughs> and this is my only chance to be cool so it's uh, yeah it's, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> Dougie, yeah cool undervalues uh this experience and then seeing the product last night um just uh honored and and i think darren said it said it best that who would have ever thought when we were all 16 17 and 18 years old you know worried more about you know competing in the next open gym with fred lang and jojo white and bobby lewis and brad Ponjalik and dave schaefer and greg schaefer than uh um someday 25 years later being able to to sit in a theater like the mendel centers and uh and relive it all again. So it's it's cool. It's it's unbelievable, and and just just very flattered that we were able to be chosen for that opportunity. Jason, you uh, you <clears throat> you've handled this interview well in the radio station, but one of the highlights. One okay, of the here it goes. Okay. Hard nosed defense. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're looking for? <laughs> That's where I'm going. Yeah, uh, when when Mark's told me that he was interested in doing the the uh, project he sent me and I think he sent everyone a uh, a packet which included uh, a copy of the film that he did with his uh, uh, team and the students at Hamilton uh, 1984 and I told Mark that I remember watching that movie <clears throat> no one else in my household was interested in watching it so I had the room to myself which was rare uh, but the uh, uh, I, I was familiar with the 1984 story uh, from Hamilton because I, I had the chance to go to the state finals regularly. And I do remember when, when they won the title. But what I really took away from watching Mark's uh, video was, wow, they, he made this like 10 years ago. Just just think about how great this effort's going to turn out. Uh, I was also happy when, when he kind of gave me a heads up as to the types of questions he was going to ask because I knew that whole hard-nosed defense thing was going to come in there somewhere. <laughs> I, I got a, a text message while we are recording here from Hedinga, and I said, hey, do you have any uh, – we're going to talk about hard-nosed D, I'm sure. Do you got any uh, comments? And he goes, ha, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Cade loving it, though, in Florida. You know, it, it, to add to that, um, the – for whatever reason, uh, when, when the – TV station would come and, and give us some press. Uh, previous to that, I, th I think Bill and Darren were interviewed as a part of uh, being uh, exceptional student athletes. Um, I don't know why I wasn't in there, but uh, <laughs> 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 but uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, the the day they took that clip, uh, prior to going up to the Final Four, they asked Steve and myself two or three questions, I think it was three, and they were basically the same question. And that's in part why I had the puzzled look when they asked me like a repetitive question. I was almost ready to say back to them, you just asked me that. And and I don't know where the hard-nosed defense thing came from. I, I, it's, it's something that Coach Schaefer always, uh, he, I'm sure he said it at some point. It, it was a, a trait of almost every team that he, he coached. And uh, it was a huge part of our success as a program that um, we, we probably, you know, as a team, played better defense historically over decades than anyone else. And, and that, that was a, a big part of uh, Coach's philosophy being passed on from group to group to group. And, uh, you know, we could use a little defense out at River Valley these days probably too. <laughs> How true, how true. Well, uh, actually, going into that, I didn't. Uh, I, I had no context, and I'd never heard of the uh, hard-nosed defense thing. So when I watched the movie, and I just saw you just sitting there, and the, when I saw that clip, it instantly became, like, tied with Christopher Walken's More Cowbell for funniest <laughs> <laughs> executions of anything. So uh, congratulations. You're up there with uh, Christopher Walken. Right. You know, I, I, I wanted to – I looked for uh, one of Coach Schaefer's – favorite uh, things to say after a, a big upset win or when any of our teams would beat a bigger school was, well, it's just a feather in our cap. 
I, I was looking for a cap that just had a hundreds of feathers that you could stick in it and say, well, this is that cap that he's always been talking about these years, you know, a headdress or something, because, uh, you know, he, he always, always talked well about the team that we beat or who beat us, always gave them credit for, for a good game and always, like we talked about, it was the team. He never said, Oh, I did this right. It was always we we were working on this, and and one thing that always got me when you guys played too was when the the you guys would beat somebody. The the coach on the other team would say, "Well, you know, we we didn't shoot really well tonight." Well, the reason you didn't shoot well was because of the defense that you guys were playing at them, and and I, it's one of the biggest things that bugs me is when a coach says well we didn't shoot well well you didn't shoot well because the hand was in your face you're taking a, a farther shot than what you normally would shoot and and the defense was tenacious but i, I just that when i read that i just go oh you're kidding me you want to give it are you serious right yeah <laughs> are you serious and uh we have one more question because i don't like to leave uh our Hall of Fame great Ray Foster out of the mix. Ray Foster's Ray, listening. Ray Foster had a question, <clears throat> and this is for uh, Mark over there. What filmmakers inspire you, if any? Um, I I think when you're in the documentary film, and I, and and I'm not, I don't I'm not Hollywood, so you know I, I look I look forward to seeing things from Steven Spielberg and those guys, but in the documentary film, you know area what you're finding is it's a lot of people and so it's not one person but what i really like i mean i like the hollywood stuff olympus has fallen i just saw that very intense but i I look forward more to the people who believe in what they have and then tell the story so that people can understand it so there's really not a one name answer but i am appreciative of people that that do this because it's a lot of work and to make it fit is really really a challenge. I mean, especially when you have so much. So uh, I, I got to give props to Kevin Weed on that. He was the one that could bring it all together. Yeah, I mean, uh, back to what you said about the documentary thing. Uh, I was uh, I was bored one day, so I started watching documentaries on Netflix. And uh, by far, the best documentary I've seen so far is Mustang Magic. I mean, it even beat out the Paul is Dead that my dad showed me. Uh, the Paul McCartney thing on. <laughs> Netflix, yeah. I mean, that's a strange. One. I appreciate yeah. it. I mean, it was really, it was really emotional, and it connected to the audience that was at the Mendel Center last night. So. Yeah, I really appreciate it. You know, I mean, that's the feedback that you hope to get, and and you know, you hear stories about Hollywood uh, directors and producers who go to see their screening for the first time and sit back there and they're they're nervous. And to be honest with you, I may have looked nervous, but when it, when the lights went down, I, I was really just somebody watching it who had seen it a lot. So. Not there were no nerves last night. I, I knew what we had. Well, you know, I I'll I'll be honest with you. I I felt like you were confident that you had nailed this thing, but you know, <laughs> there, I'll, I'll I'll be honest with you. There's always that thought, like, boy, I hope this this really hits. And when it ended, I was just happy as could be. It was just it was fantastic. And uh, you guys, who were playing big roles in that entire documentary you know your answers and your comments and and it it just really clicked and was really smooth and uh dougie you being the youngest (laughs) you were right on board too you know and and you 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 showed your appreciation for playing with the older guys and and you were under more pressure because you were a year younger and you're playing with these guys who you knew were uh who had just had a a great season uh, before their their senior year and and you guys with your personalities and and the talent you had and you know you look at you guys if you're an outsider you look at them and they say well they don't look like huge you know there's nobody six eight or jumping out of the gym or whatever you you know you you guys go on the court and you're wearing river valley mustang uniforms and you think well okay let's see what these guys can do and when you would play you guys were really fun to watch and a, and a great team. And, and I know it, it, it brings back memories, me watching you guys on that film. I remember when it was going live years ago, but it, it, it was just a super team. 
and uh, one of the greatest teams River Valley ever had. And I sure appreciate you guys being here today. I know you've been busy all weekend, and uh, it's it's just been a great weekend. And I'm so happy for Coach Schaefer, and and that Coach Schaefer having that gym named after him. I know everybody who who played for him are just really happy about that whole situation. He deserves it more than anybody. And uh, you could say everyone was so happy that they all had to say. Are you serious? Yes. Yeah, it was great. It had was to get great. that into the show at some point. How much time do we have left? Uh, we only have a couple minutes left, uh, about three or four minutes. Okay. Any, anyone got any closing comments? I any guess, funny stories? Any are you seriouses? Well, not really a funny story. More on the, the note. I think the common theme of the weekend, you know, with the Friday events and then obviously yesterday with the, the movie, uh, you know, a, a lot of it was not, you know, not about us. It was, you know, a, a big story about the community. Uh, but to be honest with you, what brought that about was, was Coach Schaefer. So the de- dedication of the, the gymnasium uh, is more than well-deserved. Uh, and just being a coach now, I coach basketball and I coach baseball. Uh, you know, we talk about the hard-nosed defense uh, and, uh, all, you know, that we're based on defense. It, it, it's something that it's tough to get kids to, fall, you know, to buy, buy into. into. Yeah. And as a coach, you know, we mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, about it's not about me as a coach it's about them getting to play a, as a team and you know I coach eighth grade basketball and that's one of my pet peeves I want them to play together as a team respect their opponents uh, and they kind of look at me sometimes like you know what what do you mean and and I think it's a direct reflection of the great coaches uh, you know coach Schaefer coach him and uh, that I've had over the years uh, and, and I appreciate that Darren it's good having you here thanks Thank for coming you, in Freddie. Billy um, final words. Final words. I have, you know, I'm usually not at a loss for a lot of final words. Uh, we only have a couple minutes, so um, just a great weekend, uh, great film. It was a lot of fun, and uh, you know, I don't think I can say anything that hasn't been said already. But uh, to build on Darren's comments, the the movie I think uh, ultimately is, you know, about the community and what the role but basketball played in it and all the generations but the the common theme in that for sure is is coach Schaefer and and uh you know he's kind of the the middle of the web that just uh grew out of grew out of him and and is RV basketball and and is uh just a neat era uh in our in our time and it's great that Mark captured it and it was a lot of fun to be a part of it all right Bill thanks for coming in Doug coach's son Doug Schaefer well, I'm going to uh, say something that came from Steve Hedinga this weekend, which I thought was really insightful, and that was this weekend was so special because, unfortunately, in everyone's busy lives, when you gather that many people together, it's often because of something like a funeral. And we were able to have uh, informal gatherings after the Friday night event and the Saturday night event, the formal gatherings at, at the Catholic Church, and then, of course, the movie showing – and my dad was there, and he was seeing all of us joke around with each other as teammates that, you know, um, oftentimes those memories aren't shared unless it's it's with something that's as heavy as, as the loss of someone that was in that group. And so we were uh, not only blessed to have this documentary available to us for the rest of our lives, but we were able to share all of that and have every single one of us all together in person to share it together and that's very rare right on right on thanks doug thanks for being here jason it's been a great weekend uh, many thanks to mark for all of his efforts uh i don't want to be redundant but i agree with just about everything the other guys said we we were fortunate to uh play for a great coach have a great community and and be a part of a, a great program and uh you know having mark choose to document that is is very flattering it it uh it's been a great weekend okay thanks for coming in jason and mark real quick you know you gave back to the community and people are going to remember this for a long time it's very special thanks freddie you know that's what we wanted to do is give back and just in closing i'd say you know um brother gary ray foster uh we've talked about maybe some shorts about harbor country that we may do here in the future um, to maybe tell more than just a basketball story. So maybe that will be on the docket as well. Okay. Well, guys, thanks for coming in. We had Mark Banky, the man behind Mustang Magic, Darren Price, Bill Corbel, Doug Schaefer, and Jason Heckthorne. Thanks for coming in, guys. It was a great weekend. Kudos to Coach Schaefer. What a great situation. 
Listen to us next week. For Dylan Lang, I'm Fred Lang. Thanks for listening. Go Blue. See ya.